Yo, yo, boys, FaZe Doritos here. Decided to send a, a YouTube video, and I'm streaming right now, so this is kind of different and interesting. We're gonna go ahead and show you guys an Affliction Warlock guide tutorial today. Um, yeah, and let's see what happens. Boom. Alright, boys, so we're in the game right now. Um, currently, last season, I hit rank 1 solo shuffle for the people that have never watched my, you know, YouTube channel or my Twitch, and... I play all three Warlock specs now because of the current situation with Warlock right now. Affliction is not the best spec. It's definitely not like remotely good, but I play it anyway because I enjoy it. Uh, recently, I've been doing a lot more 2v2 than I ever do play 3v3. And more often than not, I don't play Solo Shuffle. I played a lot towards the first weeks, but I've found out that it's not too good in Solo Shuffle. So if I was anybody in my stream right now who's... Uh, watching me make this YouTube video live or anybody that's watching this on YouTube my Recommendation is you guys avoid affliction But if you want to play it and you want to have fun playing affliction without without a doubt Just you play it play whatever makes you happy in the game and if affliction makes you happy uh, This is the video for you because I'm gonna be talking about some affliction warlock builds today and I want to tell you guys what kind of gear you should be running right now I do not have the best possible gear because I am not fully geared and the gear that you're gonna have towards the end of the season when i have enough shadow flame sparks to craft a better gear you'll be able to see that later on but for now this is what i have on my character i currently crafted the ring i put haste verse on it because i needed haste and i think the best thing that you guys can do is to try to go for like a 30 to 35 percent haste and then you want to go and stack mastery after that so right now i'm around 35 percent in pvp so if I go and hit a dummy, I go in war mode, I'll go around 35% haste. Once you get around that stat, you want to start moving towards mastery. So you want to get two crafted pieces. Well, actually, you can craft three if you don't put an embellishment on your ring. And then you can have an embellishment on your chest piece, which is very easily crafted with a lesser conquest trophy, wherever it is. I think I spent one. I don't have an extra one in my inventory, but you can go pick that up at the uh, vendor. So you do that, you get your crafted, you put an embellishment on your chest piece for the 260 mastery when you're high HP. And then on top of that, you want to craft a non-embellishment ring and a precog boots. That's what I have currently. And you can also spend for a elemental lariat without the embellishment. So you can have another crafted piece to get more haste. Or if you already hit that 33 to 35% haste cap, I would start moving to mastery. So you could also pick up a mastery necklace to go for even more main stat damage there so that's the kind of build that i would pick up here right now i'm rocking this like raid finder piece that i got from doing lfr i did lfr and i have like a 411 raid finder piece on my shoulder and i would like to upgrade this in the future next week they do unlock tier from vault so you guys that are watching on the youtube video you're probably going to be able to go and craft your tier next week so you can craft for your two set and your four set so i would go ahead and knock that shit out when you can um this is obviously not the best that i have a crit verse piece right now terrible stat the best way that you can go about getting your tier if you're only going two piece is you would pick up the helmet and you would pick up the gloves because the gloves will give you more haste and then everything else you would pick up as a um conquest piece so you can avoid getting crit verse pieces or you know mastery pieces here or there you don't want to pick up that random shit that's a waste of time so besides that um let's talk about builds real quick so afflictions currently went through a like a lot of phases where they have like a bunch of weird patches and changes coming out most recently last week they buffed ua dispel backlash by 50 percent so we got a really heavy chunk on our dispel now and it takes around like 50% of somebody's HP if they don't have any um, damage reductions active. So the best build that I run right now revolves around Drain Soul, despite the Shadow Bolt buff. Okay, first of all, I'm going to get this out the way. The 30% Shadow Bolt buff, I made a build about that and I tried it out and it was the most cope. The most cope. Nobody play that build. Anybody that's watching live in my stream or watching my YouTube video when I post this, do not play Shadow Bolt. It's hella cope. You will do like 90k crits with Haunt, but the amount of globals, the amount that you have to uh, get lucky with procs, it just feels like piss. You hit a guy for a 90k Shadow Bolt and it feels like you hit him for 10k. It's like, it's weird how inconsistent the damage feels. So I would recommend Drain Soul. Drain Soul just does way more damage over time and it's just way more consistent so drain soul build 
always over the shadow bolt build don't pick that up it's trash so next how do i go down the tree here i usually play doom blossom malefic affliction haunt just feels like hope haunt overall feels like hope every time that i pick up haunt because of a situation where i don't get malefic affliction with three stacks because of whatever reason it doesn't mean that i can get haunt up all the time either because whenever i want to get um cast off to get haunt it seems very hard to get that off if this situation is the same with malefic affliction it's just like you have to cast a spell to get the increase on your damage no matter what and if you can't cast you can't cast so it doesn't matter if you can't rapture three times because you can't haunt either so haunt is just cope I would pick up Malefic Affliction and go down the tree for Doom Blossom. 99% of the time, it's just more consistent. You can keep up your UAs more consistently after you get your Malefic Affliction. It's easier to do that. While with Haunt, if it falls off, you lose your 20% damage. While with UA, you can just keep a UA active and you'll just keep your three stacks. So I would just play Malefic Affliction on this tree. And currently I'm dropping Dark Harvest. People will probably ask me about that and why am I doing that? I did that because I wanted to get more Withering Bolt. So now my Withering Bolt has two out of two which gives me more damage on my drain soul and i was doing that so i could have an execute i was playing a lot of comps with like a rogue i was playing a lot of comps with like a um shadow priest recently and it seems like an execute with cc on healer seems to be pretty nice so i've been picking up withering bolt and dropping off soul harvest you only get 2 per 2.5 crit anyway and haste if it only hits one target and it has a maximum of like five targets or something like that so you're only getting like i don't know like 12 percent or some shit i don't know the math exactly but you get a very low amount of haste out of it which is not even worth it so dark harvest is whatever now i wouldn't even pick that up on the uh main stat warlock tree i would pick up uh inquisitor's gaze still i've been thinking about like a build where you go fell synergy and get resolute barrier so you can have a reduced like wall but i haven't thought about it yet i haven't went too deeply into this i still think inquisitor's gaze gives you a decent amount of damage and it's not as little as it was at the start of the expansion i don't know if anybody in my chat remembers those days when inquisitor's gaze used to do like literal piss it would do 0.2 percent of your damage to the point where you don't even want to pick this shit up like it was completely worthless but now it does like at least two to three percent which means you can pick this up and it it's not going to be a damage loss it's not going to be like hey why not pick up more survive you're getting more damage so i would just keep this anyway and then for the rest of the warlock tree i'm picking up feldom because i like to just be as bm and toxic as possible the thing is when you're an affliction warlock you don't really have crazy damage all the time and sometimes it's very hard to get damage off so the only thing you do have is the warlock baseline kit which makes you annoying as fuck and if you want to be maximum annoying in arena you need to start utilizing feldom double kick so you can kick somebody and kick them again making somebody hate their life that's how you play warlock you play warlock by making the enemy just despise you whether you're playing demo and you're double axe toss quail shadow fury fearing or you're playing destro you're double quail fear fear fierce and then csing you want to be as annoying as possible that's how you win an arena you get in their head so feldom is the best way to do that so i pick up feldom and drop some damage off of my uh drain soul outside of that i don't really pick up much of anything or change much of anything sometimes if i don't forget but i always forget to change my talents like i always forget but if i do not forget i'll drop feldom into demo lock specifically to pick up banish because it's a fast cast and since it's a fast cast it makes it a lot easier to banish tyrant it makes it a lot easier to banish his pet to bm and it, it just makes it really easy to verse demo lock so banish is a really op good option and i'll pick up i would drop feldom to pick up banish and then outside of that there's pretty much nothing that you would change here this tree should be exactly like this I, I don't really change much of anything in arena except for maybe this into banish outside of that nothing else changes and now for pvp talents i would um drop soul rip in certain situations pick up impish instincts into fury warriors um into casters coal observer is pretty good demo locks shadow priest um who else has trouble killing it also affliction warlocks so if you see your brothers in arena you got to be toxic to your brothers i'm sorry guys i know you guys are all affliction players but guess what you got to tell them to go fuck off let's be honest you want to win the arena you're not trying to be supportive of your enemy so if you verse another affliction warlock in arena you play cold observer they can't kill it unless they get a nightfall drain soul proc 
otherwise they have to do uh corruption agony ua and then hope it dies in one row of dots and if it doesn't you might have to hit four to five globals and four to five globals is around 160k damage off an observer so an affliction warlock is effectively hitting himself for 160k damage just to kill observer so observer is a very good option into what i just said the next option i would choose into anything is nether ward and nether ward i play this into destro warlocks and i try to bm off a destro warlock so i've played destro warlock a lot this patch and the best way to fight a destro warlock is to bm their immolate and what does that mean you use reflect on their immolate you kick them as much as you can on their immolate stop them from getting immolate a lot of destro warlock spells are reliant on immolate being active on their kill target because that increases their chaos bolt damage that increases their incinerate damage that increases their conflagrate shadow burn all that damage is increased off of their immolate so if you stop a destro warlock from casting immolate from the Destro Warlock POV, it feels like they're dry. It feels like, you know, their mouth is dry and they're just like trying to get some water, right? And the water is the immolate. So you just stop them from drinking water, bro. You just dehydrate the fuck out of them. You turn them into like a dried up raisin when they don't have immolate. So the best way that you can play into a Destro Warlock is to kick them on immolate and never let them get immolate. I'm sorry, Destro Warlocks, to out you like this. I know every Destro Warlock out there is going to hate me for telling them this because now you're going to be versing a lot of Warlocks in Arena who are going to be fucking BMing you the entire time, being an asshole, kicking them on Emily. This is this is probably a terrible idea. Now I'm going to be getting kicked perma on Emily. Every melee player, th this is not a good idea. This is not a good idea, but I'm going to do it anyway. Fuck it. So, yeah, Nether Ward, really good into destruction warlock also really good into um affliction warlock if you feel really confident that you're not going to get juked on your reflect and you have 100 percent uptime on ua reflect you can also play nether ward over observer it's whatever you want to do though it's if you want to play observer and get that free 160k damage on them you can play observer and be obnoxious or you can play nether ward they're both very obnoxious and troll like troll as in good like a good kind of troll like the kind of troll that makes people upset that's, that's the kind of troll you want to be in Arena. You want to make them upset. So, both are good options. Observer, Nether Ward, both solid. I would pick either or into a Warlock team. Now, Soul Rip. What is the purpose for Soul Rip in Arena? So, Soul Rip is really good when you can get in their face and make good use out of it. I like Soul Rip into um, RMPs. I like Soul Rip into like Thug Cleaves with a Hunter. Because, like, let's say you're cutting corners on a pillar and shit. Really good into Thug, which is Rogue Hunter. Feral Hunter. Jungle. Jungle, really good, too. Because the Hunter's going to be running in your face. Feral's going to be doing bleed damage. 25% baseline damage reduction on that shit is really OP. I do think Soul Rip is really good in those situations. So, yeah, Soul Rip, really good there, too. Outside of that, I don't really see it in anything else. I think it's really good in those types of situations. But outside of that, I don't think it's the best. And Bonza Fell, this used to be good, but I don't think it's good anymore. For some reason, they did a weird shadow nerf. They didn't put it in the patch notes, but it does like drastically less. I was hitting 180k um, Bonza Fell, and then after this like weekly change on two last Tuesday, it does 100k less. It hits like 90k single target now. So like if one guy's in Barry Bonds, it would hit fucking 90k. So this is not very good. I wouldn't play Bonza Fell. Don't play Bonds of Hell as an Affliction Warlock anymore. It's not worth it. The Fire School is a bait. It's a PSYOP. You don't really get enough out of it to make it good. So I wouldn't play Bonds. And that's pretty much it. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. And uh, everybody in my stream, check this out on my YouTube soon. I'm going to be posting this shit. Anyways, guys, peace out. See you later.